Mr. Speaker, sir, before I end my speech, I'd like to be heard on my views on the petition to repeal Section 377A of the Penal Code that has been brought to this House for debate. Sir, the petition brought forward by Mr. Siu Kam Hong in recent weeks has attracted widespread attention and debate in both mainstream media channels as well as on the Internet. I have been following up this debate, trying to understand what both sides of the coin present. Mr. Speaker, sir, I mentioned earlier that the Penal Code is a vital component of our judiciary system. It sets both the economic and social direction that our society would take in realising our vision for the nation, while at the same time protecting the interests and rights of our society. In recent weeks, I have heard many voices in both mainstream media and others that have called for the retention of Section 377A. In private, I personally received strong disapproval from my residents who have submitted their own petitions to retain Section 377A. Feedback from the ground suggests that the majority of my constituents feel the same way too. Like the Honourable Mr Zaki Muhammad, MP for Hongka GRC, I received similar feedback from my engagement with the members of the Malay community. In fact, in addition to the delicious rendang and ketupat, Section 377A became a topic of discussion during my Hari Raya visits and gathering. One feedback I received in particular was from a concerned parent, a mother in fact, whose son will be entering the national service soon, which would put him in a male-oriented environment. She is concerned on how her son would have to manage this issue during his national service. How would his and his fellow NS mate focus be affected when their main objective was to protect our nation? And she is concerned that her son's sexual orientation may be influenced. Though pro petitioners uh, to repeal 377A could always have a counter argument against a concern, I feel that it is still a genuine worry of many parents and reflect the sentiments of the society towards this issue. She further claimed that many of her friends and relatives are concerned about this issue and hopes that the outcome of our debate would address their concern. Sir, I recognise that gay Singaporeans have contributed to our nation-building process and, like most Singaporeans, been loyal to our, la our nation. However, I do feel that the Act to repeal 377A is against the mainstream approval of most Singaporeans. Singapore is a unique Asian society that still embodies strong cultural traditions and religious roots, while at the same time is also immersing new cosmopolitan lifestyles and values. However, what makes us different is that we are discerning in our approach to find the right balance that meets the needs and aspirations of our people. I am not certain that repealing Section 377A at this moment serves the larger interests of our nation. On the issue of infringing the rights of gay Singaporeans, I do not think the community's rights are being put under the microscope. The gay community in the past and present has their private space in Singapore and like other citizens, the rights to vote and enjoy the benefits that most Singaporeans are accorded. Sir, the essence of my argument is to engage in a speech that the purpose of the penal code is in serving our society and nation in this ever complex world. To me, the penal code serves the interests of the community at large. The message that I heard loud is that the majority of Singaporeans are not ready for open homosexuality acts to be part of our way of life yet. Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to record my strong support that Section 377A is retained in the Penal Code. Mr. Speaker, sir, if I may sum up, if I may sum up my argument, the proposed amendments are well-intentioned, but the need for balance is just as important as keeping our core vision for the nation and ensuring that our shores are safe. The proposed amendments are also timely, as when the Penal Code was last revised in 1984, the challenges then were different, where the impact of computers, internet and mobile phones were very insignificant. As such, I would like to encourage that we continue practicing a discerning approach in our management of the amended Penal Code and take into perspective the diversity of the different segments of our society, especially the young, 
or others who may be affected by it. We should continue the dialogue process even after the passing of the bill so that more segments of the population will better understand the essence and the application of the proposed amendment. Finally, in view of the past fast-paced and ever-changing economic, social and political landscape, it is important that the penal code is reviewed at regular intervals to keep it updated and relevant to the needs and challenges of the society. On that note, I support the bill. Thank you.